How you doing? I'm Darren with Ash Kick and Barbecue. If this is your first time to the channel, then welcome. If you've been here before, then welcome back. Today is the day we are talking Beef Wellington. I've wanted to do this video for so long, I just haven't gotten around to it. I have some puff pastry, I have a pound and a half of baby bella mushrooms, I have some fresh crepes that I made, shallots, garlic, thyme, prosciutto, and of course, the beef tenderloin cut down to the Chateaubriand. This is about two pounds. I did dry brine it last night with kosher salt and then this morning wrapped it up in cling film just to make sure it holds that beautiful shape. So guys, let's bring you in and show you how we're going to prep this beef wellington on the pellet grill. So the first thing I wanna do is get these shallots chopped up. You can see I snipped the ends off, took the skin off. So we're just gonna go ahead and get these chopped up. All right, so you can see I have my shallots chopped up. Next thing we're do, we're gonna move on to the garlic. And for the garlic, I just like to cut these woody ends off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get these chopped up. We're just gonna come in and get these finely chopped. Next, we're gonna come in with our mushrooms and we're gonna do the same thing we did with the garlic. We're gonna get them chopped up nice and fine. So it's gonna take some time. You can use a food processor, but I highly recommend doing it by hand. You know, this is supposed to be an enjoyable dish and I think most of the enjoyment that goes into it for me is the prep on this. So I like to do everything by hand. If you wanna use a food processor, go for it, but I'm chopping these by hand. Like I said, pound and a half. So I'm just gonna start by slicing them like this and then we'll get them all chopped up. All right, and here are mushrooms. You can see nice and finely chopped. This took me about five minutes. So like I said, you can use a food processor. I would just recommend doing it by hand. It's pretty enjoyable and relaxing, especially if you're doing this for the holiday season. Grab yourself a cocktail. Don't be hammered when you do this because you don't want to cut yourself, but grab yourself a cocktail, put on some tunes, just get to chopping on this. It really is a fun process cooking this. So I'm gonna get these bowled up and then we'll bring you back for the next step. All right, so now at this point, we're gonna go in with a little bit of a neutral oil. This is avocado oil and a little bit of butter. Then we're gonna go in with our shallots and our garlic, like so. We have this set to about medium low. We don't wanna get too much color on this stuff. And this is smelling amazing already. And what we're doing here is we're making our duck cell, which is essentially a mushroom paste, which is gonna act as a barrier between the prosciutto and the meat. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic, a nice umami flavor. Now at this point, we are gonna go in with our mushrooms. And I know this looks like a ton, but this is gonna reduce down so much. And the goal here is to get all the moisture out of these mushrooms, because there is so much moisture in mushrooms. So we're gonna cook this for quite a while until all that water evaporates. To this, we're just gonna add a big fat pinch of salt. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot of liquid in here. You just wanna cook it until it's completely gone. You want these very, very dry so you don't have a soggy pastry by the time it's done. This is what I'm talking about right here. All that moisture in there, hopefully you can see that. We wanna cook that until it is all gone. And it's gonna take a little time, but that's okay. You're looking at probably about 10 minutes or so, just stirring occasionally. But you can already see how much these mushrooms have reduced down. I mean, the pan was dang near overflowing. And again, look at all that moisture in there. Just gonna keep cooking it down. And I think this is one of the biggest mistakes people make when they're making beef wellington is they don't cook their mushrooms down enough. There's too much moisture in there and that ends up, like I said, with a very soggy pastry. So you really wanna cook this down. It's almost impossible to burn mushrooms. It's very, very hard due to all the moisture in there. So really make sure you're cooking these down and it dries out. So it has been about 10 minutes or so and just take a look at the difference. A lot of the water's coming out. Everything is starting to dry up. This is exactly what we're looking for. We're gonna let this go for a little bit longer because like I said, in my opinion, I don't think you can dry it out too, too much. You just obviously don't wanna burn it, but the less moisture you have in here, the better. You almost want like a pate texture to it. So I'm gonna keep letting this go and I'll bring you back and show you what we're gonna do when it's close to being done. We are close to being done. I'm just gonna rip off some fresh leaves of thyme and get them in there just for a little freshness. Just look at what this is reduced to. I mean, the amount that was in there when we started and the amount we have now is significantly different. And so you wanna maybe even cook more mushrooms than you think you're gonna need. Like I said, this was a pound and a half. I'm hoping that's enough. I probably could have gone two pounds just to be safe. Everything is pretty much getting dry. It's starting to kind of coat the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna come in with a little bit of whiskey, a good whiskey, and we're just gonna deglaze the bottom of that pan and let that alcohol cook off, and that is smelling fantastic. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell this. Between the whiskey and the garlic and the 
mushrooms and everything is just, this is just a flavor bomb. So this is cooked down enough, not any moisture left in this pan. Everything's starting to stick to the bottom. We deglaze it a little bit with that good whiskey. Now I'm just gonna get this onto a sheet tray. And once we have that onto a sheet tray, we're just gonna go ahead and spread it out so we can get it cooled down quickly. Now we're just gonna go ahead and let this cool. All right guys, so I apologize. We're searing off our tenderloin right now. I forgot to press record. We have this set at medium high heat. It's been seasoned with salt overnight. We just put some pepper on there. We're doing about a minute per side. We're not cooking it. We still want it to be raw in the middle. So we're just getting good color all around it. I thought I pressed record, I apologize. But all we're doing is searing this off. After you got all the sides, we're gonna get our end pieces. So like I said, I apologize about that. So we put some avocado oil in the pan, a little bit of butter, and then medium high heat. We just seared it for about a minute per side. We're not cooking it. You can tell it's still nice and rare. We just want to get that nice color on there. So this just came out. At this point, we're going to get some English mustard on there. You want to do this while it's hot so the flay can really soak this in, or the Chateaubriand, whatever you want to call it, the tenderloin. So we're just going to go ahead and hit it with our English mustard. This has a nice bite to it. You can also use horseradish. Just don't use French's yellow mustard. You can use Dijon or something of that sort. All right, now at this point, we're just gonna let this cool room temperature, let it sit out and absorb all that mustard and I'll bring you back when it's time to do the next step. The next step in this process is we are just going to take our crepes and lay them down like so. I think I can get away with three of them on here. So about like that. And then we're gonna take our prosciutto and all you wanna do here is just kinda shingle them and lay them out like this, starting here. We'll go edge to edge with them. All right, so now that we have our prosciutto laid out, we're gonna go ahead and get our duxel. We're just gonna get this on there. All right, now we're just gonna get it all spread out nice and even. All right, so now that we have this spread out evenly, we're gonna come in with our Chateaubriand. Now this part's a little bit tricky. You're gonna to wanna to use the cling film to roll it. So we're just gonna raise this up like so and get this kind of tucked in tight. All right, so now at this point, tucking these edges a little bit here. We're gonna roll this over, kind of tuck this in nice and tight and then just roll it like so. Then we're gonna pinch our ends and we're just gonna kind of rock it back and forth. So I actually went ahead and rewrapped this one and then rolled it. But that's basically what you wanna do is pinch the ends and roll it so it's nice and tight like so. You can see we didn't get complete coverage on the crepes. They probably could have been a little bit bigger, but it's all right, we still got the puff pastry to go under there. And now you just kinda of wanna shape it. And you wanna get this into the refrigerator now for one hour. So I'm gonna get this into the fridge and we'll see you in an hour. So here is our puff pastry. We're just gonna get this rolled out a little bit here just so we can make sure it covers the whole entire Wellington. All right, so now that we have this kind of rolled out, it's kind of ugly looking, but that is okay. We're gonna get the Wellington in. We'll get that set right there. Now at this point, just wanna go ahead and carefully pull up on this pastry here. And then we're just gonna carefully, tightly roll it over. Now you can see here about how much extra we need. We're just gonna take this off right here so our edges can meet together like so. That's looking good. Go ahead and get these edges tucked in nice and tight. Cut off any loose stuff. We wanna make sure we pinch the bottom so it's all completely sealed. But like that, we'll just roll it so the seam side is down. All right, so now that we have the Wellington completely rolled up, we're gonna carefully transfer it over to a baking sheet, like so. All right, so now that we have the Wellington wrapped in the puff pastry, just wanna come in with a little bit of egg wash, which is just two egg yolks and some water, about a tablespoon of water. We're just gonna go ahead and get this completely painted up. This is gonna help with the browning, give us a really great color on this beef Wellington. All right, now at this point, I just have one more step. I wanna get some nice decoration on here. It's gonna be optional, but I'm gonna put a lattice on here. You can always take the back of a knife and score it a little bit just for some decoration, but I'm gonna show you how that lattice looks right now. We're gonna come in with another sheet of puff pastry and just roll it out. And the reason I say it's optional is because you do have to buy this lattice roller, which is only good for rolling lattice for this or pies or stuff like that. So I'm just gonna take it. We're just gonna go down like so. I'll just come in and clip these ends. Now at this point, we just wanna go ahead and get our lattice spread out. All right, one thing I wanna point out is, I don't know if you can see it in here, but some of these aren't quite separating. So you can just take a knife and just help them out. And then that'll help spread them out. So there is our lattice pattern. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the Wellington up here, get our lattice over the top, just kind of get it pulled down and spread out like so. 
All right, and there is our lattice pattern. It looks really nice. We're just gonna go over that again with some egg wash. Now we're just gonna come over the top with a little bit of salt. So this beef wellington is ready to go out on the Traeger. I am just going to go ahead and get this probe inserted so we do not overcook this thing. And now we're gonna get this out on the Traeger, which is set at 425 degrees, so I'll meet you outside. Here she is in all her glory, rolling at 425. We'll pick back up when this thing is done. I'll let you know how long it's been. Look at that beautiful color on that beef wellington. It's reading about 123 degrees inside. We're gonna get it inside and let it rest. This took about 50 minutes out here at 425, so I'm gonna let this rest for about 20, 30 minutes. We'll cut into it and see how we did. See you then. This is it, the moment of truth. This is beautiful on the outside. I'm hoping for a medium rare, medium at most on the inside. We'll see how the meter probe did. Oh, this is nerve wracking. So let's just slice it in the middle and see how it turned out. Wow, look at that, beautiful. Not quite medium rare, definitely still medium, but that is absolutely amazing. It smells so, so good. Oh, so beautiful. I'm, I couldn't be happier with this. Maybe if it was a little more mead rare, but I will take this any day of the week. The line of duck cell around there looks amazing. Beautiful, beautiful cook. I'm so happy about this. All right, guys, and it is the moment of truth. I'm so excited to try this. Before I do, I just want you to know if I can cook this, you can cook this. And I know this because I've never made a beef wellington before in my life. I've actually never had beef wellington before. So this is a first for me. I just wanted to show you that if you do some research, it doesn't have to be daunting. I mean, I filmed this for you guys. What if this would have turned out horrible? I mean, is it a perfect medium rare? No, but it is a medium and I'm happy with how it turned out and I know it's gonna be delicious. So let's give it a try. Now I'm gonna cut myself off a decent sized piece here. So we're not gonna skimp on this. So just look at that. So beautiful. Oh, I, I'm so excited. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, that filet is just tender as can be. Go ahead and maybe take a half of that. Big bite. Cheers, guys. Wow, this is by far the best thing I have ever cooked on this channel. It is absolutely fantastic. The filet is perfectly seasoned. It's tender. The duck cell is uh, just an umami flavor bomb. It's so savory. The prosciutto adds a beautiful element to it. The crispy outside of the crust is just, I can't tell you how much I enjoy it. I'm going in for another bite. You know, there's certain dishes that when you've never cooked them and you accomplish them, you just can't help but smile. This is one of those dishes. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this wasn't an easy cook for me, you know, especially filming it. Forgot to press record a few times, had a few mishaps off camera. It's been a long day of filming this and it does take a long time, but the reward is absolutely fantastic. I gotta have another bite. I just, this is amazing. If you're thinking about doing it, do it. You're not gonna regret it. Just take your time with it. Make sure everything's done properly and it's gonna be delicious. Cheers, guys. Absolutely amazing. The duck cell is fantastic. The filet is still the star of the show though, which I wanted. Guys, you have to give this a try. I have no words other than you should try this. Don't be nervous, don't be scared. Just cook it. It's not like you're recording it. If you screw up, nobody's gonna know and it's still gonna be delicious. I don't think I'm gonna get another video out before Christmas. So I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you all so much for the support the past few years and this year. I look forward to bringing you hopefully valuable content for years to come. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, stay safe, and we will see you next time.